The term drainage refers to the river system of an area. Small streams from different directions come together to form a main river, which eventually drains into a large water body, a lake, a sea, or even an ocean. The entire area drained by a single river system is called a drainage basin. Elevated regions like mountains or uplands separate two such basins, and this divide is known as a water divide. India's drainage system is shaped by the country's relief features, and rivers are broadly divided into two groups, the Himalayan rivers and the Peninsula rivers. The Himalayan rivers are perennial, fed both by rainfall and melting snow from the high mountains. With long courses from their sources to the sea, they cut through the mountains to form deep gorges. Along their journey, they erode in the upper courses and deposit in the lower plains. This results in features such as meanders, oxbow lakes, and vast fertile deltas. Two of the most significant rivers here are the Indus and the Brahmaputra. In contrast, the peninsula rivers are mostly seasonal, with their flow depending heavily on rainfall. During dry months, even large rivers shrink in size. Unlike their Himalayan counterparts, these rivers have shorter and shallower courses. Most of them originate in the western ghats and flow eastwards into the Bay of Bengal, forming deltas. However, a few rivers from the central highlands flow westwards, cutting across the ghats before draining into the Arabian Sea. Across the world, the largest drainage basin belongs to the Amazon River in South America. In India, however, both Himalayan and Peninsula rivers play a crucial role, shaping landscapes, supporting agriculture, and sustaining millions of lives. The Himalayan rivers are long, mighty, and fed by snow and rainfall throughout the year. The three major river systems here are the Indus, the Ganga, and the Brahmaputra. Together with their tributaries they form lifelines of the subcontinent. The Indus River rises near Lake Mansaroa in Tibet, and enters India through Ladakh, carving deep gorges. Its tributaries, the Zaskar, Nubra, Shyok, and Hunza, join in the Kashmir region. Flowing further, the Indus is joined by the Satluj, Bais, Ravi, Chenab, and Jhelum before entering Pakistan near Mithankot. With a total length of 2,900 kilometers, the Indus is among the world's longest rivers. However, under the Indus Water Treaty of 1960, India can use only 20% of its waters, mainly for irrigation in Punjab, Haryana, and Rajasthan. The Ganga River system begins at the Gangotri Glacier, where the Bhagirathi meets the Alaknanda at Deva Prayag. At Haridwar, it descends into the plains. The Ganga is joined by several Himalayan tributaries, including the Yamuna, Gagara, Gandak, and Kosi. While these rivers enrich the soil, they also cause devastating floods in the northern plains. From the peninsula uplands, rivers like the Chambal, Betwa, and Sun also feed into the Ganga. Flowing eastwards, the Ganga bifurcates at Faraka. One distributary, the Hooghly, flows south into the Bay of Bengal, while the main channel merges with the Brahmaputra in Bangladesh to form the Meghna. Together, they create the Sundarban Delta, the world's largest and fastest growing delta, home to the Royal Bengal Tiger. The Brahmaputra River also begins near Mansarawa in Tibet, where it is called the Tsang Po. Flowing east parallel to the Himalayas, it takes a dramatic U-turn at Namcha Barwa and enters Arunachal Pradesh as the Dihang. Joined by the Dibang and Lohit, it becomes the Brahmaputra in Assam. Here, heavy rainfall swells the river with water and silt, giving it a braided channel and creating vast riverine islands like Majuli, the world's largest. However, this also leads to devastating floods each year as the river shifts its course. From the arid lands of Ladakh to the fertile delta of Bengal, the Himalayan rivers have shaped India's geography, culture, and economy. Their power to erode, deposit, and nourish makes them not just rivers, but true lifelines of civilization. Unlike the perennial Himalayan rivers, the peninsula rivers are largely rain-fed, with shorter and shallower courses. The western ghats form the main water divide here. Most rivers, like the Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, and Kaveri, flow eastwards into the Bay of Bengal, forming deltas. Only a few, like the Narmada and Tapi, flow westwards, making estuaries. The Narmada River rises from the Amarkantak Hills in Madhya Pradesh, flowing westward in a rift valley. Along the way, it creates stunning landscapes like the marble rocks of Jabalpur and the spectacular Dwadar Falls. 
Covering parts of Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat, it is celebrated in the conservation project Namami Devi Narmade. Parallel to the Narmada flows the Tapi River, originating in the Satpura Ranges. Shorter in length, it drains parts of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, and Gujarat. Along the narrow western coastal plains, smaller rivers like the Sabarmati, Mahi, Parathapuja, and Periyar also flow into the Arabian Sea. The Godavari, often called the Dakshin Ganga, is the largest peninsula river. Rising in Maharashtra, it flows over 1500 kilometers before reaching the Bay of Bengal. Its vast basin, spread across Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, and Andhra Pradesh, is enriched by tributaries like the Wainganga, Pranhita, and Penganga. The Mahanadi begins in Chhattisgarh and flows through Odisha, covering about 860 kilometers. Known for its fertile plains, it sustains millions and is home to one of India's major dams, the Hirakud. The Krishna River rises near Mahabaleshwar, flowing 1400 kilometers into the Bay of Bengal. Important tributaries like the Pima, Tungabhadra and Koyana support agriculture across Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. The Kaveri originates in the Brahmagiri hills of Karnataka, flowing 760 kilometers before entering Tamil Nadu and reaching the Bay of Bengal. Its tributaries, including the Hemavati and Kabini, nurture fertile lands while the Shiva Samudram Falls generate hydroelectric power for cities like Misuru and Bengaluru. From the deltas of the east to the waterfalls and estuaries of the west, the peninsula rivers are not just water channels. They are engines of agriculture, culture and development, shaping the very identity of southern India. Have you ever imagined Srinagar without the beautiful Dal Lake, or Nainital without its sparkling waters? These lakes are not just tourist attractions, they're lifelines for nature, people and culture. India is blessed with countless lakes, each with a unique story. Some are natural, formed by glaciers like Nainital and Pimtal. Others, like Sampar Lake in Rajasthan, are seasonal and even help us produce salt. In the coastal regions, lakes such as Chilika, Pulikat and Koleru are lagoons, born from sea waves creating spits and bars. But lakes are more than just scenic beauty. They regulate river flow, preventing floods during heavy rains, storing water for dry seasons, supporting hydropower projects like the Guru Gobind Saga, moderating climate and nurturing ecosystems. They are natural treasures of tourism, recreation and livelihood. Now let's talk about rivers, the eternal companions of human civilization. From the earliest settlements to today's megacities, rivers have shaped our economy and lives. They irrigate our fields, generate electricity and connect regions through navigation. For a country like India, where agriculture sustains millions, rivers are nothing less than a blessing. But here's the challenge, river pollution. Every day, untreated sewage and industrial waste pour into rivers. Their natural self-cleansing ability is overwhelmed. Take the Ganga, for example. Earlier, it could dilute pollution within 20 kilometers of flow. But rapid urbanization and industrialization have made this nearly impossible. Polluted water harms not only aquatic life, but also human health. It's why projects like the Ganga Action Plan were launched, to restore rivers to life. Think about it. What would life be like without fresh water? No farming, no clean drinking water, no thriving cities. That's why protecting lakes and rivers is not just about nature, it's about our survival. Lakes and rivers are the heartbeat of our land. Let's cherish them, protect them, and ensure they continue to flow forever.